gentlemen, good morning, bonjour. We are about to begin session four, infectious diseases three. We, I would like to invite as the chairperson, Luis Carlos Ferreira from ICB USP São Paulo. Thank you very much. It is really a special day for me since we are here not only chairing this session and presenting some outstanding scientists talking about very important issues regarding transmission of flower virus like chikungunya and dengue and the interactions with vectors. That is for us, uh, well, a challenge, not only us in Brazil, but great part of the tropical world today. And, but it's also a very important occasion for me because we are, as probably you all know, celebrating a very important agreement between Butantan, oh, excuse me, Fiocruz, and our Institut uh, Pasteur and our university, University of São Paulo. And especially for me, who, who was well, born here in Rio de Janeiro, had my education here at University of Federal University of Rio de Janeiro at Carlos Chagas Institute, and to meet several friends here, and people that I've been working during the last several uh, years, and to be part of this huge enterprise that will certainly change the future of many people to come. So, uh, continue the, the program that has been est established. I, I'm very glad to uh, <coughs> invite the persons who will be part of this uh, session, which are, first one, Flavia Barreto dos Santos, who will talk about chikungunya threat in a dengue endemic country. And I'm not sure if they will come here first. Well, just introduce them. No. Okay, for the discussion. So, I'm very pleased to invite uh, Dr. Flavia Barreto dos Santos to come and talk to us. Uh, about this very important subject. Thank you. Well, good morning. I would like first to um, thank the organizers for the invitation to be here. And as Dr. Paulo said yesterday, there would be many people to be in my place right now because I actually I'm not a chikungunya person. But that's a challenge, and I took it. And I think it's also convenient because it's also a challenge for us, I believe, uh, right now in the country. So we're going to go for some, let me put it here. But I'm not going to try to go too deep inside of it because we're going to have to uh, have many renowned uh, researchers here to uh, share with us their, their real experience on chikungunya. But I just tried to share some of the, the um, questions we have and situations we have in Brazil and in the American continent and in Brazil and also uh, uh, related to uh, a problem we have, which is dengue. So dengue is a problem we have right now. And chikungunya is really a threat for us. Most people already know that, right? So just to start with, uh, chikungunya, for as many people know, it derives from an African language, Macondi language, which means that which bends up due to the factor that the infected person has the contoured posture due to the severe joint pain they have. And it was first reported in Tanzania in 1952, and it does circulate in Asia, Africa, and we are gonna see later on also recently in the American continent. So uh, as all we must know, it's an emerging public health problem in many tropical and subtropical regions of the, country, of, the, of the world. It's typically transmitted by as the Jitkai and as the Lopictus. We're gonna uh, hear, listen to it a lot afterwards with Dr. Ricardo and Dr. Anobela. It's mainly characterized by fever, rash on the skin, and arthralgias, and followed with headache, joint swelling, and also in some cases, conjunctivitis. And, the virus is an alpha virus from the uh, Togavirid family. It's a spherical virus and locked virus. And it has a positive single stranded RNA with approximately 11.7 KB. And pretty much the genome 
It calls for non-structural proteins and also the structural proteins and the capsid and the EGMA proteins. So we have E1 and E2 and E3. We are going to see that the, uh, those, those genes are pretty important for the disease um, spread. And the single chikungunya serotype is divided into three genotypes, West African, Asian, and the East Central South African one, or called ECSA. They have, all, uh, of course, they have different vectors and they are spread in distinct geographic regions, and that's gonna be talked also. So, one interesting thing that has been a recent report is that a mutation in a particular position on the E1 gene at position 2 to 6, it has been responsible for the virus adaptation to the Aedes albopictus. So this is going to be very stressed later on in the other talks. And due to the distribution of this vector, Aedes albopictus, this mutation may increase the potential of the virus to extend its range to Europe and Americas where this vector is important. So, so just to, um, to show some of the uh, outbreaks reported, so most of the outbreaks reported for chikungunya, they date from the 50s and 60s, pretty much on the Africa, Africa region and Asian region. And more recently, after 2000, so we have epidemics, a, a very important epidemic on Reunion Ireland from 2005 to 2011. And also in Europe, Europe, in Italy, France, some cases were reported also. And also uh, from 2013, we're gonna see that later, also in the Caribbean island. So the clinical presentation from chikungunya, chikungunya infection can vary from asymptomatic cases, that's from three to almost 30% of the cases are symptomatic. However, most of their cases are symptomatic. And the, um, the range of the disease can vary from an acute phase, which can range from three to 10 days of illnesses, a subacute phase, which varies from 11 to 90 days. And if the, the, the patient has a recurrent inf uh, disease, it's the chronic phase, which is, it, it occurs after 30 days of the infection. So as I said before, most of the symptoms, the more, most commonly symptoms are fever, polyarthralgias, headaches, myalgias, in some cases, vomiting, rash, and also uh, conjunctivitis. And so those are some of the, uh, the picture we have. You know, rash, usually they develop swollen, uh, edema in the knees, edema on the elbows, and rash on the skin, you know, on the babies also, swollen feet, and sometimes uh, arthralgias, and sometimes conjunctivitis. That's are the most commonly observed symptoms in the acute phase. In the subacute or the chronic disease, that's based in a study performed in the, during the epidemic in the um, Reunion Ireland in 2006. So usually what they report, this is a, a report on the patients infected and that was observed six months up after the infection. And in the chronic arthralgia, during that phase of the disease, the chronic disease, what is observed, usually the most frequent uh, arthralgias are observed in the wrist and hands, and the ankles and the feet. So that's what has been reported usually. Some patients do present those chronic symptoms years after they got infected by chikungunya. So in 2013, I'm not gonna go through it because uh, it's gonna be uh, spoke afterwards. So in 2013, there was an alert, a WHO alert, which confirmed the transmission of two cases, local cases of chikungunya in the Americas. And after it, from October 2013 to March 2014, this outbreak spread to other islands in the Caribbean, island, uh, Caribbean and almost 800 cases were, were confirmed during that time. So in two years that this scenario we had with the, um, we cannot see the, the Americas right here, but how the disease, the outbreak spread over two years, and we have here the South American and Central American, and also the Caribbean. And since the, uh, this, this alert, the first cases uh, reported, uh, more than 1.2 million cases were reported from 2013 to 2015 in 43 countries and in the American continent. 
So that's the uh, numbers we have for these years. It's about almost 300,000 cases suspected, almost 10,000 were confirmed, and 44 deaths were also uh, reported. So that's the data for May 2015. In Brazil, in Brazil we have a first imported case reported in, back in 2010. So that case was the first case reported it was from a person, an infected person, actually a surfist. He went for a surf competition in Indonesia and he got infected there. So he came back to Brazil when the case was confirmed here in Rio de Janeiro. And he, ha he has been fully recovered. So he's fine now, but it was the first uh, reported case we had. And last year, we, we had a lot of important cases, mainly due to those epidemics occurring in the Caribbean. 50% of them were imported from Haiti, and most of the cases were, and we have other cases from also Guadalupe, Venezuela, Dominican Republic, and French Guiana. And most of those cases from Haiti were from the military personnel who came back from their mission in Haiti at that time, and they went to Sao Paulo. So that's pretty much why, why Haiti is, it has a, a high number of uh, importation. And the first local case confirmed in Brazil, they were occurred in September 2014 in Oiapoque, in the north region. So those cases started in Oiapoque, in Amapá, and a, a, a total of 500 cases were reported. Young people, younger, uh, younger and younger adult, young, and adults were the, the most affected, and symptoms more frequently uh, described were in fact, the arthralgia and headache and myalgia. So at that same time, the same month, September 2014, uh, another location, Feira de Santana in Bahia, in the north region of the country, also reported the first local cases, the first transmission of chikungunya. And back that time, about 1,200 cases were reported. The same thing, the same the same group who was the most affected and the same symptoms were pretty much described. So, which was, was pretty interesting, and as we saw, we have three different genotypes. The genotypes circulating on Oyapoki were from the Asian origin, the one which has been described in the Caribbean islands, but the strain isolated in the, uh, the Bahia outbreak was a different genotype, was an African genotype. So that was pretty surprising. So this is a, a really, really recent paper. It just came out from the, the group from, from Evandro Chavez. And they really studied those two epidemics from Bahia and Oyapoque. So what they saw, it's really confirmed that the local transmission of chikungunya in Oyapoque was the uh, Asian genotype. And the genotype circulating in Feira de Santana was the African genotype. And they presumed the index case for this African genotype was a person who went to Angola and came back and got sick in, 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 in Bahia. So and he, they also stressed that if chikungunya becomes established in Brazil, transmission may occur in 94% of the municipalities in the country. So they just uh, confirmed what we, what we talked about the uh, the two distinct genotypes circulating at the same time in the country, and also they established this map. I think uh, it's gonna be also uh, uh, talked about it later. So they had, what they have reported as 35 municipalities have 95% importation risk for chikungunya, analyzing those epidemics from the north and from the northeast. So, this is gonna also be, just to say that it's gonna be also uh, talked about it later with Dr. Ricardo, probably and Dr. Amadela, that also the uh, vector competence of mosquitoes circulating in Brazil had been addressed for competence in transmitted chikungunya. So that's the picture we have right now. We have about uh, 3,000 cases reported in Brazil, 2015, about uh, 1,600 confirmed, and those are the states with the uh, local transmission, Amapá, Bahia, Distrito Federal, Mato Grosso do Sul, and Roraima. So that's the picture from the American continent, right? So we have the uh, widespread of the uh, chikungunya circulation through the subtropical and tropical areas, even going to more temperate areas. 
which uh, mimics what we have for dengue. So that's what we have for dengue, as we know, and it's the uh, four serotypes were circulating in the same region. So those are the new estimates for dengue, right? So we cannot talk about chikungunya without addressing our main problem, which is dengue. Worldwide, as we see, half of the world population are at risk of trans getting infected by dengue, and also in Brazil. So just to uh, see how the disease goes, it has been important for the um, epidemiology since the 80s up to now. We have a major epidemic here in 2010 with 1.4 million cases reported in a single year. And it has been a real problem. We have more than 8 million cases. These are data from 12 years only. 8, 000, 8 million cases reported, many severe cases and deaths. And the worst for the disease epidemiology is the predominant serotype shifts. We've seen dengue 3, with a vir virulent serotype, emergency of dengue 2, and then dengue 1, and then dengue 4. So it's kind of, as I say, like a mess right now. So those are the numbers for dengue. Uh, chikungunya is a problem, is a threat, yes, but also dengue. So only until now, April, we have reported more, almost 800,000 cases in Brazil. Pretty much due to the epidemic in Sao Paulo, in the southeast region, and the main serotype right now is dengue one. So that's the picture we have. And just to, to, to finish uh, here, we cannot forget that despite the signing symptoms they do share, uh, they're pretty much the same, we cannot forget that dengue, dengue can evolve to severe disease. Dengue can evolve to a fatal case. That's one thing that we really have to keep in mind. So just to let people know what, what's the scenario we have right now uh, for dengue, we have a very well-established national network for diagnosis with one national reference lab and four regional reference labs. And of course, with different lab capacities, but pretty much with all those techniques established for dengue, serology, molecular detection, and also sequencing. So that's the scenario we have for dengue. And so is it a threat, just to finish. So we, we have report, and we're we gonna talk about it also, that the local transmission in the Americas has resulted in 1.5 million cases already. Due to, to the population susceptibility, we can expect major epidemics and rapid spread of the disease. We know some countries in Latin America, they have limited uh, uh, diagnosis, so many cases may be occurring right now, but being mi misdiagnosis with dengue. And we know no specific vaccine or treatment, and we know it's hard to control the vector. And we, we, one thing we have to keep in mind, we have to base the surveillance of we have for dengue and also train people to really uh, not, uh, uh, not my differentiate diagnosis uh, from uh, chikungunya. So just to finish, finish. So just to finish here, dengue is severe. Yes, severe, it is severe, but um, chikungunya can be really debilitating. Those are photos from the Republic of Dominica epidemic. That's how the disease really can be. And as they say, it's on the move for sure. We know that, right? For many reasons, many reasons as population stability, we have vector widespread and also a crazy global aviation network. That's one day network. And many emerging possibilities. This has been stressed in 2012 when chikungunya was here, a threat to emerge as well, Zika virus. So I'm gonna finish with what we had, just detected Zika virus. And the uh, last one is just to say it's a problem. To make matters worse, we have seen four virus circulating here in this epidemic. So here we have chikungunya, we have Zika, we have two dengue serotypes circulating one semester here during this outbreak in the Pacific. So this is pretty hard. Right now we are facing our mosquitoes with a crisis identity. They really don't know what to transmit right now. Dengue, chikungunya, Zika, what else? You know, so that people are really scared right now. And what's next? We really don't know, right? It's a question mark. As I said, it's been a pleasure. We have lots to collaborate with and to learn, right? Chikungunya is pretty new for us right now. We have a lot of experience on dengue. And we have a lot of to learn, Mr. Ibanez and Zika. Thank you very much. Sorry.
Thank you very much. Unfortunately, due to the time and the idea that we have an open discussion section at the end of the presentations, we'll have to stick, stick in, the, in the time. And the next one that we are very pleased to, to invite here is Dr. Midat Kazanji from Sud Pasteur in Guyana. And this is a, well, a, a meeting that will celebrate people from uh, Fiocruz and again the Pasteur Institutes. And Dr. Midat Kazanji will talk about the evolution of chikungunya outbreak in French territories in America. So very complementary to the presentation of one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to thank the organizer for, for inviting me to this uh, symposium. And I'm really very happy and proud to be with you for this ceremony yesterday and to see that our network became bigger and bigger. Then thank you very much for this invitation. I am actually uh, the director of Pastor Institute in, in French Guiana, and I would like to show you today the outbreak in, uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, as Flavia mentioned, that the outbreak was out in San Martin, in San Barthélemy, and uh, after that expanded to the, to the other part of the Caribbean. And also, of course, in uh, French Guiana, which, uh, of course, as you know well, that uh, we have a border, France has a border with the Brazil uh, across the, the French Guiana. Then I'm sorry that some of the slides is overlap with the, uh, with the previous talk, but in uh, any case, this, uh, that will be interesting also to, to know more about the virus. Uh, Shikungunya virus is a single standard RNA virus with the Tuga, uh, Tuga viride family, a genus alpha virus. There is more than 30 species related to this uh, uh, genus. Uh, and antigenically classified into seven complex, uh, the chikungunya virus belongs to the same leaky forest virus antigenic complex, such as Mayaro. Mayaro is also an alpha virus in, uh, in South America, in uh, French Guiana, as well as in uh, Brazil. Uh, other viruses related to this family is the onion virus, Ross River, uh, and also some other virus like tonad virus is endemic in, in French Guiana. The vectors are uh, the uh, Aedes uh, species, like Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus in uh, endemic epidemic uh, urban cycle. The virus is, uh, uh, the genetic diversity of the virus is divided to three clades. Uh, the, um, the, 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 the oldest one, the first one discovered is the uh, East Central South uh, African glad shown here. And the Indian one with the specific mutation in the E1 gene is also related to this clad. The other one is the West African clad and the Asian uh, clad. The uh, infection uh, with chikungunya, uh, it's uh, presented in these slides, and after the bite by the mosquitoes, the virus infect first the fibroblast, and then affect the circulating of the blood and affect the, the monocytes and the macrophages. And uh, very quickly after the replication phase in the, in the blood, the, there is very high uh, immune response with the strong inflammatory response, including many cytokines, and also, of course, the uh, specific EGM and EGG antibodies. Chikungunya virus is able to infect many cells, is able to infect the muscles, the brain, the liver, and the spleen, lymph nodes, and using many uh, clinical uh, symptoms, and the, the disease is, we can divide it into two phases, the acute phase and the chronic phase. During the acute phase, the incubation period is uh, uh, ranged from three to seven days uh, with the fever in the majority of patients, arthralgia and arthritis, also in the majority of patients with the patient, and uh, some of them, the majority of them, develop OC rash. A possible complication, uh, in, especially in neonatants like uh, myocarditis, hepatitis, ocular neurological disorders, and uh, as uh, Flavia mentioned, there is no specific antiviral drug and no commercial vaccines. However, uh, in Pasteur Institute, in uh, Frédéric Tanji Laboratory, they developed the vaccine, which is a recombinant vaccine between measles virus and chikungunya, and uh, there is uh, um, a company, an uh, Australian company, developed now the vaccines, and we hope that we will start the first clinical trial in French Guiana as well as in other uh, endemic countries. 
The uh, chronic disease is, is an incapacitating disease uh, following the acute phase. The patient may develop chronic arthralgia. Uh, 40, 43 uh, patients after 15 months and 12% after three to five years. Then it, it, it could uh, stay for a long time. And uh, of course, it's a source of uh, concern for public health. The re-emergence, re um, the originated of the virus is in Africa, in Central Africa. The first uh, outbreak was found and discovered. The virus is originated from Tanzania, but the emergence uh, could be summarized in these slides. Uh, since 2005, uh, they spread out outside Africa in the, in the Indian uh, island, the Indian Ocean Island, in Asia, and as well as in Africa, and Flavia showed you all the countries that where uh, the outbreak has been occurred. Uh, there is an increasing risk of the emergence in the America because of the presence of the main vectors, uh, the Aedes species, uh, and the, the Aedes species is very distributed, largely distributed from Florida to Brazil. And <clears throat> of course, the Egypti is, is, is very uh, endemic in, in, uh, in the French department of the America. And also, of course, the increasing international trade with the endemic area. Uh, in a couple of slides, I will show you the emergence in the French Caribbean island. And uh, as uh, the previous uh, speaker uh, told you that the first cases was found in San Martin in mid-November 2013. And uh, reported uh, a cluster of cases of fever with arthralgia. Of course, uh, at the beginning, they thought that is a dengue. Uh, but uh, very quickly, they found that the 6th December, oops. Um, then at uh, the 6th of December 2013, the biological confirmation of chikungunya cases without travel history and thus autochthonous circulation of, of the virus and the, uh, the, 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 the outbreak was declared in Saint Martin. And very quickly after that, uh, the additional autochthonous cases was reported in the uh, Caribbean island like Martinique, Guadeloupe, Barthélemy. And I will show you a couple of slides uh, the outbreak in each uh, part of, of this out uh, of this uh, uh, the region. Then first, uh, as you see here, the, the, the outbreak was started in mid-November with the peak uh, in in, uh, in the first part of uh, 2014, and after that another peak uh, in, in in the end of of the year and the beginning of this year. Then. Uh, in this part of the slide, we summarize the, uh, the situation in uh, February 2015 with 5,200. The population is, is not very high in this island, but however, uh, 5,200 people was uh, infected, uh, which represents 14% uh, of the population with three deaths. Uh, very quickly, I mean, uh, many, some, some, a couple of weeks after Saint Martin, the Saint Barthélemy, which is a very close island to, to Saint Martin, in 13 of December, the first cases was discovered with many peaks, and they uh, they followed by, by phase one, phase two, phase three of the outbreak, and the same there is a peak uh, during the beginning of uh, of this year. Then uh, in February 2015, there is one 1,600 uh, people infected with the virus, which represent 18 percent of the population and uh, zero death. This is the situation in the, the two other islands in Saint Martin and Guadeloupe. At the same time, uh, after Saint Barthélemy, the, the outbreak came and arrived to, to this. And as you can see here, the curve is very typical to, to outbreak in bo both islands. And uh, there is there's very, very few cases now in, in both islands. However, in uh, Martinique, there is more than 72,000 infected people, which represent 80% of the population with 83 deaths. Uh, and in uh, Guadeloupe is 81,000 uh, people infected with the virus, which represent 20% of the population and 67 deaths. Then that's in French Guiana, this is the situation, and the, 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 the outbreak is still active in, in French Guiana. Uh, they start in March 2014, and uh, very, very, very very few cases, and after that we have a peak uh, during the so 2014 and uh, still active until today. Uh, until now there is 14,000 uh, people infected with the virus, which represents 6% of the population as with two deaths. Then the situation in the Caribbean now is uh, presented in this slide, showing that more than 
1,200,000 people infected with the virus, with 30, 37 confirmed cases, about 200 deaths, including 44 countries. We also analyzed the strain from the uh, Caribbean and from Guyana, uh, analyzing the complete genome analysis performed at Pasteur Institute in Paris. And as you can see in this slide, the strain is related to Asian strain in Guyana, Martinique, Saint Martin, Saint Barthélemy. Here is you have the other uh, strain from the Asian strain. Uh, Flavia showed you these slides, and uh, I will stop just a few minutes on that showing that, uh, yes, the, 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 the outbreak was started in Oyapoque, which is a very close, of course, the, the close town to uh, French Guiana in 13 of September, and in the Bahia region uh, within, in the 18 of October. The most interesting thing for me, uh, which I am a virologist, is that the strain is totally different. The strain in Oyapoque is related to Asian strain, of course, uh, as like French Guiana. And the strain in Bahia region is an African strain. And it's really very interesting to see the, the development of the outbreak uh, and which strain will be dominate in the future in Brazil. Uh, other uh, point is that uh, in, uh, in South America and in the Caribbean, the, the cycle of the virus is an urban cycle. However, in Africa, it's a sylvetic cycle with many uh, mosquitoes, sylvetic mosquitoes. Um, and the, as you know, the biodiversity in South America is very high, with a high number of, 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 of animals living very closely to the town. And there is a high risk of establishment of chikungunya and zoonotic cycle of wild animal mosquitoes in this part of the world, making it impossible to eradicate disease in the future. Then there is a lot of concerns. Um, of course, the, uh, the, the, the index cases, we need more a serological and respiratory to identify that, the immunity of the population. For example, in Samarta, there is 14% of, of asymptomatic infection, and the antitest is 14%. That is, we, have, we need also many uh, seroprevalence studies to show the difference between the asymptomatic and the, the, the cases. And of course, diagnostic concern. Few labs actually involved in chikungunya diagnostic, and only uh, the PCR are commercially available and the, uh, the serological tests are still in-house, and we need really development uh, of, 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 uh, of diagnostic tests. In view of these data, we developed uh, a transversal project, including <coughs> not only uh, uh, chikungunya, but for dengue, West Nile, and other arboviruses circulation in the, in the region. And the reason why we developed this project is a real need uh, uh, for multidisciplinary research because many questions still uh, remain, uh, for example, the large virus diversity, short time of viremia, cross reactivity of serological uh, test, and uh, few knowledge of uh, the epidemic uh, virus in this area. And this is why we developed this, uh, this project, including six IPIN Institute, uh, IPIN uh, International Pastoral Institute Network, and 10 other institutes from outside an institute, uh, from outside Pasteur. And uh, as you can see here, many labs are implicated in Brazil and of course, French Guiana. This project, there is uh, four work packages in this project. Uh, um, they, they, they presented here. The first work package is improving the block of diagnostic test, uh, the investigation factor, uh, favoring chikungunya, dengue, uh, and other arboviruses circulation in urban uh, area. Uh, studying the interaction of mosquitoes, uh, microbiota uh, virus, uh, and the consequence uh, in, in, in different vectors, and of course, the modeling of the infection in this part of America. And this workshop is developed in perfect and direct uh, collaboration with the few crews in uh, Conficiba with Claudia and Nunes, uh, and, and, and the aim of this work package is to develop uh, the direct and indirect diagnostic test. <coughs> then this is, uh, uh, in, in our point of view, is ambitious and competitive project, regional and international project, integrative and disciplinary project, and teaching new uh, research platform. And in French Guiana, we uh, recently inaugurated a new building dedicated to the vector, named Vectopol, 
uh, including insectarium, chemistry lab, and uh, uh, microscopy uh, platform. And uh, this project could uh, present a large visibility and research conducted in the America and large attractivity. Just to show you in this slide that we have in French Guiana many projects in collaboration with Brazil. I uh, put in this slide 10 projects, but we have some more. Uh, uh, focused on biodiversity, emerging virus and zoonosis, vector and arboviruses, and the malaria. All these projects are now developed with many labs in Brazil. Uh, just to thank my college, all the data presented here, uh, which performed in the uh, Caribbean, are, are done by the National uh, uh, Reference Lab, directed by Dominique Rousset here and her team and the anthropological project developed by the anthropological team and with the scientists from Pasteur and Institute. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. Uh, thank you, the organizer, Savino, for inviting me to speak with my, my dear friends uh, about this uh, subject important like uh, chikungunya virus. Uh, I'm going to repeat some slides, some uh, uh, data, because uh, we did not have time to discuss and cut um, uh, some slides of uh, the presentation. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the vector components of uh, um, mosquitoes from America to the chikungunya virus. Uh, as uh, everybody told you in the previous uh, presentations, uh, it's an uh, alpha virus. Uh, Arbovirus that has a Salvatsky cycle in the in Africa. It is spread all over the world in temperate, tropical, and subtropical zones. Uh, it has been uh, spread since mostly since uh, the, the 50s. Uh, the chikungunya then, after uh, emerging in Africa from uh, Asia, Asia, and uh, the Pacific area, uh, it uh, arrived in in Europe and much later in, in, uh, in the Americas, as uh, Mirdad and Flavia told you. And also Mirdad told you that uh, it has uh, four or uh, three uh, most main genotypes, and, uh, and that, uh, that one genotype, uh, the um, East uh, Central South Africa uh, uh, genotype, uh, uh, emerged a mutation that uh, allowed the virus being transmitted uh, most easily by its double pictures because uh, uh, before that, uh, chikungunya virus was only transmitted to, from men to, to human to humans uh, by Aedes aegypti. So uh, the kings of America, uh, Flavia told you, the virus entered in the, in the and uh, in two, probably in Brazil, uh, uh, through the main uh, doors, maybe. Uh, it was from French Guiana uh, entering in Amapá in the Amazon. It was the, the Asian uh, genotype of the virus. In another virus, uh, another genotype from the African uh, genotype, invaded the, um, the northeast area here in Fila de Santana. This is the map from Nunes, the same uh, paper of Flavia and Mirna, I told you. So, um, in, uh, we have this uh, situation. Um, and before the summer, we discussed this uh, 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 epidemiological situation, we're going to tell you about the viral transmission by the mosquito. What happened to the mosquito? The mosquito uh, take the blood, and the blood go to uh, the midguts. And in the midgut, the, must, the virus may, must enter the epithelial cells of the, the, the midgut, and replicate over there. And after that, the virus must spread, disseminate, and gain other secondary tissues of the mosquito to be transmitted. Among them, the saliva grains. And then, the virus can be in the saliva of the mosquito, and so, so the mosquito can transmit the virus in the, in the following bite. It takes some time, it's, it's a incubation period, that is influenced, most influenced by the temperature of incubation. Maybe the temperature, the, the environmental temperature. And so, uh, the virus to do that, uh, it must uh, pass through some barriers. It, and these barriers are genetically determined. 
So the first one is to pass from the virus that replicates in the epithelium to gain the emo cell, to, to main cavity to, or the main cavity of the, the mosquitoes. And so uh, go to the salivary, salivary gland and so pass the barrier in the salivary gland and be in the saliva. And so these are also um, determinate, uh, genetically determined. So uh, the same species of mosquito can, uh, according to geographical distribution and the genetic diversity and base of the population, can uh, transmit differently the, the virus and the serotype. Okay. So uh, the objective of our uh, work was to uh, do a Pan-American evaluation of mosquitoes um, from several countries uh, to chikungunya virus. This we decided to do, as Plata told you, in 2010. Uh, the first case was diagnosed here in Brazil, and for so as one year after that, we decided to do this, this project. We were ahead of everything, and did this project in collaboration with the Annabella Fayou Laboratory. Uh, we started in 2011 and 2000, uh, and did this collection mosquito from the United States, temperate areas to Uruguay and Argentina, also temperate areas. Uh, across the, all the continents. It was uh, 35 mosquito, uh, 35 mosquito population uh, belong to the Egypti and Albopictus. There are some areas there is no Egypti, no Albopictus, only Egypti and vice versa. And we tested the, uh, this, uh, all these populations uh, with uh, three uh, virus, uh, two, uh, two strains uh, of uh, the, the, the African genotype and one strain of the Asian uh, geno genotype. So oh, this was uh, done in laboratory, uh, infecting mosquito with the, 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 the virus. And we, we determined two main rates, the, the dissemination efficiency. It means the proportion of mosquito that the uh, virus could uh, uh, pass the, the, the midgut and gain the main cavity. Uh, but it's not uh, 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 the only important, it's not really very important for the transmission. The main uh, important is the transmission efficiency. It, it, it is the proportion of mosquitoes that have the virus in the saliva after the incubation period of around uh, maybe uh, 10 days or 7 days. It was almost 5,000 mosquitoes examined. So the results were that mosquitoes uh, from the Americas, this is all population, Egypti and Albopictus, the dissemination rate was around 100%. So it's very different from the yellow fever and dengue virus. But if a chikungunya virus is like that, almost all mosquitoes disseminate the virus. So this, there's no main difference, but maybe there's no uh, uh, main uh, barrier in the midget for dissemination. But this, the, the, the scenario was very different for uh, this, the transmission rate. See that it is very heterogeneous it, a transmission rate. And this may explain some uh, um, transmission in such areas, but not in other areas, but we're going to discuss a little bit later. So uh, this was some, uh, uh, it's the same for, for the both mosquitoes, but we discover uh, that uh, Albopictus and Egypti could transmit both uh, genotypes and the two lineage of the, the African genotypes, uh, although Albopictus could transmit the, uh, the most, uh, most better the uh, non-mutant uh, um, uh, genotype. So when you compare the, the, trans the dissemination rates with the transmission rates, you can be that it's very different, we may think about the barriers, existence of barriers in the salivary glands. This is different for transmission in mosquito from down the Americas. So these are the main uh, results with, with one strain showing that the variable uh, uh, transmission uh, uh, efficient. Uh, in uh, red, you see that the most uh, uh, dissemination and transmission was high, but in some areas you had a low transmission, it was very heterogeneous. And see, uh, we may compare the uh, transmission efficiency. See, here is a Zobopictus, here is a Egypt, 
genotype and the three different viruses we tested. See, for the Asian genotype, some populations like here from the Panama has low transmission rate for the, the uh, African uh, genotype, but high efficient to transmit the um, uh, Asian genotype. Me, this may explain uh, probably a different population, uh, genetic population that uh, Annabella is going to talk to you about later. Uh, and uh, also uh, that uh, the, the spread of uh, in, uh, in uh, Central and uh, in Caribbean area. Uh, for example, here, uh, some uh, population of um, uh, Aedes aegypti may transmit, uh, uh, from Buenos Aires, for example, can transmit uh, uh, much better the Asian than the, um, than the uh, South African uh, genotype. So, uh, most interesting was uh, when we studied such a um, population, for example, here the population of Nobo pigs from Paquetá, here in Rio de Janeiro, that you showed that the virus can disseminate very rapidly. One day, even the same day after taking blood infected, the virus can disseminate in this population, different uh, lineage and uh, uh, strains. Uh, we, we showed that the transmission can be achieved in two days after the infection. Okay. And so it's very rapid infection and transmission maybe in uh, I double pictures and uh, chikungunya virus with the um, African genotype. We have shown also before that the Egypt and our pigs can spread uh, more than it was uh, expected before. And using this data and using our recent work showing the distribution of uh, Aedes albopictus, we updated uh, uh, recently the, the geographic distribution. So in the 19 countries can uh, with, uh, uh, be infected with, infected with Aedes albopictus. And that the, the, the spread of these species is very uh, rapid to see uh, the comparison between some years. This area here we, where we are, for example, are very... Uh, uh, the density of our pigs is very high, and based in these results, we, we arrived at the conclusion that the salivary glands seem to be an important barrier for our transmission of our chikungunya virus. Different transmission efficient between mosquito populations, very important. Moderate to high transmitting efficiency detected in, in most mosquitoes. It transmission can be done in two days. Uh, so the emergence of chikungunya in the continent is is expected, uh, mostly in Brazil, and uh, the previous uh, work, uh, 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 speakers showed you the same maps. Uh, this is a provision of uh, spread uh, using our data. They used the data, of our data of the study of mosquito dissemination, and also our data on mosquito um, infection construct these maps. Uh, as uh, Flavia told you, the situation now in Brazil, that maybe we expected much more, we have only 15 municipalities that reported the chikungunya infection, uh, a confirmed case. So we expected, well, first we expect the epidemic to always stay in all uh, municipalities, but not. But maybe why? Uh, maybe we, we first, the concern is about the Aedes albopictus. I repeat the same in slides. So you can see here where are the, the infections. Uh, see here. Uh, these is, uh, areas here are this area where the, the genotype, uh, the African genotype is, uh, is spread, are areas very infested with uh, elbow pictures. And, but the other areas, uh, for example, the Asian genotype was detected in north, for example, here and here, see, is the Asian genotype. Maybe uh, elbow pictures has an important uh, um, uh, role in transmission and but uh, uh, the Brazilian uh, government, unfortunately, uh, today did not consider uh, Aedes as um, a target species to control because up to now Aedes was not um, confirmed as natural vector of all this virus. But we call attention, but this coincidence is not um, only a coincidence. Maybe. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Well, excellent work and information for all of us. So continue with the uh, cycle of the characterization of Chikungunya. Uh, well, Annabella has provided the picture here. And uh, I 
is a long story of different virus transmission and has already a strong collaboration with Ricardo. So the next speaker will be Annabella Payou from Sud Pasteur. Welcome. And up this uh, description of uh, chikungunya in, in this section today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would like to say that I'm very pleased to be here and to see all my friends from the mosquito, mosquito world. And uh, we continue the Chikunya saga with uh, some mosquito. So, um, so you know that uh, about 25% of the, the annual death worldwide are estimated to be related to infectious disease. And 23% of these emerging infectious diseases are vector-borne diseases. And so this map shows you the distribution of the most important arboviruses in the world. And you see that there are many concerned the tropics. But it changed very rapidly. And so to, to make the transmission possible, the vertebrate host here, the human or animal, the, the vector, vector uh, the mosquito and the pathogen, such as the virus, must meet repeatedly in a permissive environment. And this environment can be a new urban environment where most outbreak take place, and also a rural forested environment where most uh, exotic cycles of aboviruses are described. So, uh, for an outbreak for, to take place in a new region, the virus should be introduced. So it can be introduced by, by someone which is infect, who is infected, and so accessing the risk of transmission can be done by calculating this parameter, the basic reproductive number, the R0. And uh, for example, uh, for R0 equal to 2 here, oh no, here, so one imported can generate two secondary cases, and one secondary case generate two others. And for the calculation of this R0, you need different parameters, and most of them are related to the vector. You have the vector density, the human beating rate, the daily survival of mosquitoes, and the extrinsic incubation period and the vector competence, which are very, very important for estimating the risk. So, uh, Ricardo already told you about the vector competence. So just to say that the vector competence is the ability of an insect to ingest the virus during a blood meal, to ensure the viral replication, and to transmit the virus to a suitable vertebrate host. So one parameter which is very important is the, the extrinsic incubation period. That means the time necessary for the virus to reach the salivary glands. And this parameter is very uh, sensitive to the temperature. When you increase the temperature, you decrease uh, this uh, duration of the extrinsic incubation period. So let's talk about chikungunya. So chikungunya has been first isolated here in Tanzania. After the emergence in Kenya, it spread in the islands of the Indian Ocean, in here in Southeast Asia, in uh, India, and very surprisingly for the first time in Europe. It was in 2007 in Italy, and in 2010 and 2014 in France. And, uh, and in 2014, uh, chikungunya arrived finally in America, causing more than one million cases. So this chikungunya virus is, a, is, a, is an alpha virus. You know this by heart. There, is, there, are, there are three genotypes. Asian genotype, the Central South African genotype, and the West African genotype. And um, since it, uh, its emergence, it was in Kenya in 2004, you can see that most recent outbreaks were associated to a very unusual vector, Aedes albopictus, instead of the typical vector Aedes aegypti. And this mosquito, Aedes albopictus, preferentially transmit a chikungunya belonging to the East Central South African phylo group and presenting a point mutation at the position 226 of the E1 glycoprotein with a valine instead of an alanine. So who is this mosquito, Aedes albopictus? This mosquito is a mosquito, is a Asian mosquito, is native from Tokomaisia, is now present in all five continents because of two main biological characteristics. Uh, first, the, this mosquito is able to resist to the desiccation, like Aedes aegypti. But second, this mosquito is able to spend the bad season, the cold temperature during winter, by entering in diapos. So these two main biological characteristics lead this mosquito to extend everywhere in the five continents. So in the lab, 
when we estimate the disseminated infection rate, as uh, Ricardo explained you, is the proportion of mosquito able to disseminate the virus beyond the mid-girl barrier after the infection, okay? And when you estimate this disseminated infection rate according to the title of the blood mirror uh, provided to the two mosquitoes, Ides albopictus, Ides aegypti, and containing two, di the different, the two different viruses, the epidemic virus with a valine adipogen 1 to 26 here in dark blue, or the original one with the alanine adipogen 2 to 26, both belonging to the East Central South African phylogroup. And you can see with Ides aegypti, there's no differences between the two viruses. However, for Ides albopictus, this mosquito better disseminate the new epidemic variant of chikungunya rather than the original one. So what happens if we provided the two viruses at equal title together in the same blood mirror? So we estimate first the mid-gut, which is examine the mid-gut because the mid-gut is the first barrier to the dissemination of the virus inside the mosquito and we'll also uh, estimate the proportion of uh, the new epidemic variant of chikungunya among all the viral clones isolated from the mid-gut of Ides albopictus here, here in light blue, Ides aegypti in dark blue at different days after the infection. So you can see that the, 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 the virus, the epidemic virus predominates from day one post-infection only in Ides albopictus and not Ides aegypti. For the saliva, which is a an indication of the transmission if you can detect the virus in the saliva, you can see that the new epidemic variant of chikungunya predominates from day three in the saliva of Ides albopictus only. So that means that the new epidemic variant of chikungunya is favored just after one cycle of transmission in Ides albopictus only. So the, the next question is to know if the infection of the mid-gut is a key step in selecting the new epidemic variant of chikungunya in Ides albopictus. So what we did, we infected Ides albopictus, Ides aegypti uh, by oral feeding, giving the two viruses equal titer in the same blood meal, or you can also uh, injecting the two viruses inside the mosquito bypassing the mid-gut barrier. So we examined the dissemination and the transmission. For, you can see here that the new epidemic variant of chikungunya it predominates when the two viruses are provided by oral feeding. And this advantage was lost when the two viruses are provided by direct inoculation inside the mosquito bypassing the mid-gut barrier. And this is for Ides albopictus. For Ides aegypti, whatever the way to infect, there is no difference. So for the transmission, you can obtain the same pattern. That means that the new epidemic variant chikungunya is favored only after the oral infection and not by direct inoculation. So we, we can say that the, the infection of the mid gut is a key step, is essential for a better dissemination, a better transmission of the new epidemic variant of chikungunya in Aedes albopictus. So finally, uh, chikungunya arrived to America, that means nine years after the, 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 the first uh, big outbreak of chikungunya in, on La Réunion Island, it was nine, nine years after, yeah. So uh, the, the important case was someone coming back from Philippines, and uh, the, this virus for, was for belonging to the, the Asian genotype. So uh, today, uh, more than the local transmission has been uh, identified in more than 50 countries, causing more than 1 million cases. And we have evaluated the vector competence of different mosquitoes, Ides aegypti for the Caribbean, and also Ides albopictus aegypti from Florida, and also from the South America, from French Guiana, and also from Brazil. So the first question was, uh, are the Ides aegypti from Saint-Martin uh, very susceptible to the chikungunya virus belonging to the Asian genotype? So we have infected these mosquitoes with the Asian genotype, and we evaluate the transmission rate, which is the proportion of mosquito with the virus detected in the saliva, ready to transmit the virus. So we did it at different days after the infection uh, of Ides aegypti from Saint-Martin with the chikungunya virus from Saint-Martin here in red, and also we use as a control chikungunya virus from La Réunion. So you can see that this mosquito, Ides aegypti from Saint-Martin, delivered the, the virus at day two post-infection when infected with chikungunya virus from La Réunion, and at day three post-infection when infected with chikungunya virus from, from, uh, from Saint-Martin. 
So later we compare the transmission rate obtained uh, with, uh, with uh, the mosquito from Saint Martin. We compare with the transmission rate obtained with the either, other Ides aegypti from the Caribbean and also for French Guiana from Brazil and from, U from US. And we evaluate the transmission rate at different days after the infection with the chikungunya from Saint Martin and also for the chikungunya from La Réunion to, to compare. You can see that mosquitoes from Aedes aegypti, from Saint Martin, Guadeloupe, from Les Saints, from Martinique, and also from French Guiana, seems to be more susceptible to Cunha virus from Saint Martin compared to the mosquitoes from uh, Brazil and, uh, and uh, the south of the US. So the question is to know if the, these mosquitoes, Aedes aegypti, are genetically the same. So uh, genotyping on these mosquitoes using microsatellite should be, should be done. So we evaluate also uh, the, the genetic diversity of the viral population you can detect in the saliva of these mosquitoes seven days after the infection with the virus from Saint Martin. So we use uh, different mosquitoes from Saint Martin, Guadeloupe, Martinique, French Guiana, Macapa, Rio, and South of US. And you can see that the most mutations were found here in the saliva of Aedes aegypti from Saint Martin infected with the virus from Saint Martin. So it seems that this virus, Saint Martin, belonging to the Asian genotype, is well adapted to the two Aedes aegypti from Saint Martin and ready to express very rapidly a mutant spectrum uh, consisting of a majority of synonymous mutations. And uh, you can see that this, all of these mutations were found, most mutations were found in the structural gene, and they are synonymous. So the emergence of the Cunha virus in, in, in the Caribbean in Saint Martin and the rapid spreading of this, this virus in the Caribbean seems to be related to this virus well adapted to Aedes aegypti from Saint Martin and to the high ability of Aedes aegypti from the Caribbean to transmit very well this, this virus. So even if Aedes albopictus is not present in the most islands in the Caribbean, Aedes albopictus can coexist with Aedes aegypti in other places, for example, in, 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 in Rio, in Brazil, and also in the, in the, in Brazil, and also in the southern US. So I just remind you that this mosquito, Aedes albopictus, transmit very, very well a chikungunya belonging to the East Central South African phylo group, presenting a valin abosian E1 to 26. So we have infected these two mosquito species with the chikungunya virus from Saint Martin and chikungunya virus from La Réunion, uh, from, uh, from La Réunion. And uh, you can see here that uh, the Aedes aegypti from, uh, from Florida and from Rio here are more susceptible to the viruses compared to Aedes albopictus. And you can see that Aedes albopictus from Rio is, seems to be more susceptible to the two viruses compared to Aedes, Aedes albopictus from Florida. So the question is, are the two mosquitoes, Aedes albopictus from Florida and from Rio, genetically the same? So we did uh, some genotyping using the different macrosatellites to try to genotype the two mosquito species. So, uh, no two, two mosquito uh, populations. And, and you can see that uh, we, have, we did it with different po populations of Aedes albopictus. We found two main clusters. The, the, the cluster one with the mosquitoes Aedes albopictus from North and Central America and, and Aedes albopictus from South America. And you can see that mosquito from Florida belong to this cluster one, to cluster one, and this mosquito from Florida are more susceptible to the ASEAN genotype of chikungunya rather than the, 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 the virus from, uh, from uh, Africa. And you can see that the mosquitoes, Aedes albopictus from Rio here, it's from South America, are more susceptible to the, to the virus from Africa compared to the ASEAN genotype. So we can say that the, popul the, the populations of Aedes albopictus from America are genetically different and they behave differently when infected with different the virus of chikungunya. So the fact was to have again the totonus cases of chikungunya in the south of France, from France because Aedes albopictus is in France since the, uh, 2004 and now it's spreading very, very quickly. You can detect it in 20 departments in the south and imported cases are in, annually reported like here. So the threat last year was to have again a total of cases of chikungunya in the south of France with the on, on, ongoing outbreak in the, in, the, in, the, in the Caribbean. So chikungunya has already emerged in, in Europe. 
It was in Italy in 2007, in France 2010, and the vector was Aedes albopictus, first detected in Albania in 1979, and in Italy in 1990. And, uh, and in the, this mosquito is now present in 20 uh, countries in Europe. So at that time, have evaluated the vector competence of the Aedes albopictus for the south of France, with the chikungunya virus isolated from a patient from south of France. And we also uh, infect uh, Aedes aegypti from India because the imported case was somewhat coming back from India. So you can see here what you estimate the, the transmission rate from days after the infection, that the Aedes albopictus here in light blue is, uh, is susceptible, is very susceptible uh, compared to the, the typical vector Aedes, Aedes aegypti from India. So this experimental infection were, 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 were run at 28 degrees. That means that after the infection, we incubate the mosquito at 28 degrees. What happens if we incubate mosquitoes at 20 degrees, which was the temperature recorded in September 2010, when autotonous case of chikungunya were recorded in South of France? So we have infected the mosquitoes with the, the, two, the two viruses, the chikungunya virus from La Réunion with a valina abusion E1226, chikungunya virus from South of France with a alanine position 226, both belonging to the East Central South African phylo group. After the infection, we incubate at 20 or at 28 degrees. You can see that for the Aedes albopictus for the South of France, when you, in, when you infect uh, this mosquito with you can have virus from La Réunion, you increase the temperature, you increase the transmission rate, which is, ver which is quite usual. And when you infect Aedes albopictus from South of France with you can have virus from, uh, from La Réunion, you, 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 in, you from, from south of France, you increase the temperature, you decrease the transmission rate, which is very, very surprising. For Aedes albopictus from La Réunion, whatever the temperature, whatever the virus, there is no difference. So we can say that Aedes albopictus from the south of France better transmits the virus from south of France at 20 degrees rather than 28. So just a, a last point for the temperature. The temperature is a very important transmission of aboviruses. In addition to uh, have an effect on the mosquito physiology, the temperature can affect the vector competence. So we hypothesize that the cooler temperature increases the transmission of, of chikungunya by selecting the viral virus more adapted to replicate at the low temperature. So for that, we will use an in vitro system to select a thermosensitive virus by several passages of the virus on insect cells maintained at 20 or at 28 degrees. After 15 passages, we evaluate the transmission rate by infecting Aedes albopictus from the south of France with the two chikungunya viruses. And you can see here that the chikungunya virus uh, selected by serial passages at 20 degrees was better transmitted when infected mosquitoes were incubated at 20 degrees. And for comparison, the virus, uh, virus selected by serial passages at 28 degrees was less, trans less transmitted when infected mosquitoes were incubated at 28 degrees. So when we compare the, the genome of the two, the two viruses, you can see that most mutations were found in the E2, uh, E2 gene. And we also found a very interesting mutation at the, at the key position E1226, brought but from valin to alanine. So this mutation was uh, detected at the passage seven and increased gradually to uh, reach 20% uh, at the passage 20. So we can say that the serial passages of the virus at 28 degrees has selected a viral variant containing a mutation, the position E1226 with the alanine, which doesn't allow a better transmission of the chikungunya virus by Aedes albopictus. That's why the Aedes albopictus of several friends doesn't replicate very well when incubated at 28 degrees. I will finish soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just the last thing. So the first autotonous cases were detected in, a, in, the, in, the, in France. It was in 2010. Can this scenario happen again in the south of France? Last, last, it was last, last uh, summer. So we incubated, we infected Aedes albopictus south of France with the, two, with the, with the viruses uh, belonging to the Asian genotype. And we we, after infection, we incubated at 20 or at 28 degrees. And you can see that the, the virus was detected very early at day three post-infection when infected mosquitoes were incubated at 28 degrees and only at day seven post-infection when incubated at 20 degrees. So this result contrasts with what I have represented previously 
where I disable pictures for the south of France, better transmit the chikungunya virus belonging to East Central South African phylo group at 20 degrees rather than 28. Does that mean that depending on the virus genotype or the, or the mosquito genotype at the temperature, the pattern on transmission can be very different. So, and finally, my last slide, it's that uh, to say that in October 2014, finally, autonomous cases of chikungunya were detected in the south of France. And it was, uh, it was, uh, uh, the important case was someone coming back from Cameroon and, and the virus involved was a virus belonging to the East Central South African phylo group. That's this event confirmed really that I desalbo pictures from the Fraco France better transmit the chikungunya virus belonging to the East Central South African phylo group rather than the Asian genotype. So just to finish, I would like to thank all the members of my team and also other collaborators who contribute to the work and more particularly Ricardo, my friend uh, of uh, 15 years, something, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Much and an excellent work, and it's a pity that we don't have much time to travel you and the others to explain more detail about the work. But we have to continue and go now to the last speaker. We'll now change a little bit. We'll focus more on dengue, and we have quite a lot of chikungunya. And Claude Flamand, also from Guyana, will talk to us about your work on the epidemiology of dengue fever on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, and first I want to thank the organization for giving, giving me the opportunity to be here. It's my first time in Rio, and it's a very great pleasure to be here for this special event. So I want to present you the, some modeling approaches that we are implemented at the Institute Pasteur of French Guyana. Uh, in order to better understand the spatial temporal spread of dengue fever using climate and environment. So, as uh, the excellent presentation of Flavia and Annabella pointed, uh, increasing uh, risk of epidemics, pandemics, and disease re emergence are recently uh, are being report, reported in a world in constant transition. And this work is characterized by climate and environmental changes, rapid population increase and human movement, and evol evolution of pathogens. So, although uh, biological and ecological uh, determinants of vector-borne disease are, are fairly well understood and researched, climate changes and environment impacts on future distribution of vector-borne disease are an important area of epidemiologic research and very current topic. For example, in France, we have this year the Climatic uh, Congress, uh, the Climatic World Congress uh, at the end of the year. So, uh, Fangan is one of the countries affected by land fever, uh, which uh, has been defined as the first priority infectious disease by uh, local expert community. <coughs> And we know that dengue fever is the most important mosquito-borne viral disease in the world acquired through the bite of Aedes aegypti and very common in tropical and subtropical areas. There are four distinct serotypes, and uh, the, the infection produces a spe um, spectrum of clinical illness that ranges from uh, influenza-like -like illness to the potentially fatal dengue hemorrhagic fever. And even if several vaccines are being developed, there are no vaccine and no curative for the moment, so prevention is limited to vector control and treatment strategies. So in French Guyana, the four serotypes, as we can see in the graph, are circulated, uh, and uh, we, in recent decades, the epidemiology evolved from uh, endemoepidemic to hyperendemic state, and as example, the last outbreak in 2000. And and 12, 2013, it was a dying virus 2 outbreak, and it caused uh, more than 13,000 of clinical cases, 689 hospitalization, and six deaths. So, epidemic dynamics are driven by complex interaction between intrinsic and extrinsic factors. 
And uh, even if uh, the development of surveillance system in French Guyana, uh, in combination with uh, how can I say that? If, in, with uh, technological advances in information systems, uh, offer the possibility to uh, rapid outbreak detection. Outbreak occurrence drivers and spatiotemporal transmission of dengue fever we, remains poorly understood in French Guyana. So we conduct this project in order to know what are the drivers of dengue outbreak occurrence, what are local dynamics of transmission, and what is the effect of city-specific characteristics on the pattern of spread of epidemic. So the first step of our approach is to study the impact of global and regional climate on dengue fever outbreak. And the objective was to evaluate the potential of climate uh, to forecast dengue fever outbreak. Uh, we tried to identify the potential climate predictors uh, using a composite analyse, an, an analysis comparing epidemic years to non-epidemic years, and we built and evaluate a forecast model. So data used uh, were including dengue fever uh, cases, uh, specifically, specifically uh, biologically confirmed cases, and grilled atmospheric wear analysis data, including pressure, sea level, wind speed, sea surface temperature, meteorological observation, and large scale index, including NINO and NAO index. So we had 10 outbreaks uh, from the study period, from uh, 1991 to 2013, and uh, the annual uh, monthly mean cycle showed a strong seasonality during the outbreak, as you can see here, with an onset uh, which is observed frequently in the, at the beginning of the year, in January, uh, a peak, an epidemic peak uh, during the, the mar month of March, and uh, the end of epidemic during end of May and the beginning of June. So uh, the composite analysis uh, showed that epidemic years were associated with uh, three indicators. The first one was uh, here in this part of, uh, so we, we just point, we just used the uh, uh, data from Atlantic, Pacific, and America uh, area in order to show what uh, happen during epidemic years uh, specifically. So the first indicator associated was uh, eating of the equatorial Pacific Ocean uh, sea surface temperature during the, the month of July and August preceding the outbreak. The second one was a straight, uh, an increase in the difference of pressure between years the Azores high and the Amazon, Amazon basin depression in November, and all the experts in climatology were, were uh, uh, agreed to say that these both indicators uh, lead to an important rainfall that was, uh, an important rainfall deficit, sorry, uh, over French Guyana that uh, also associated with epidemic years. So we define a very simple model, it's a multivariate uh, regression model, with uh, sea level pressure and uh, sea surface temperature. And the model shows a uh, good high heat rate, uh, it's uh, about uh, sensitivity, so that means the proportion of uh, detected outbreak among the two outbreaks, uh, showing the ability of a simple model to uh, forecast dying outbreak, uh, uh, dying outbreak years. So just a second step uh, about uh, our application is the use of very high resolution remote sensing, sensing environmental data to study dang risk transmission. So when we applied the conceptual approach of teleepidemiology uh, by combining in situ data here, uh, including uh, entomologic and epidemiologic data, uh, with spatial products uh, issued from satellite images, and we just use this both element to research statistical association. So the association uh, identified help us to to 
they try to identify the the lead uh, environmental and climatic factors of uh, the emergence of dengue virus is very localized spatial unit, leading to the production of hazard entomologic uh, risk map and vulnerability mask map, and these both elements uh, help to produce uh, disease risk map, with, 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 which help uh, monitoring. No, which help to impl the implementation of monitoring disease early warning system in order to uh, help the making decision process for operational control strategies. So we used one data, as I told you, and uh, it was about a large amount of one data for specific surveys. It was entomological surveys conducted by the entomological unit of uh, in situ Pasteur during a period of two years. And uh, mm -hmm. this survey uh, permit to collect uh, type of breeding seed, presence of breed seed, the vector density uh, in, the, in the study area, in, located in coastal area in French Guyana. And we had also uh, meteorological factors and remotely sensed data. It was very high resolution data with a resolution of 50 centimeters. <laughs> And uh, we have two, two different images, one for the dry season and one for the rainy season uh, in order to have um, variability for precipitation uh, and include uh, multi-temporal uh, dimension in the analysis. So we can see uh, that for every experimental unit that we are uh, using, it's about ours and the surrounding garden or yard. We can see uh, the type of ours, the presence of trees, vegetation, presence of wood. And experimental units allow and direct detection of the presence and type of breeding sites. And larger buffers allow consideration of distant environment. So we, as I told you, the both images in, in, in dry season and in uh, rainy season help uh, us to have uh, temporal dimension and we can have multi-temporal land use classification and we can, we can see as an example that we can pass for, uh, from bare soil to bare soil uh, in some areas, from, for, from bare soil to soil with little vegetation when we have uh, uh, rain and we can study statistical association like that. Uh, between ground data and remote sense data. So we study the relationship between environmental variable and larva presence using uh, data mining techniques adapted to big volume of data and we built a, a, a model with uh, significant, significantly associated variables including five indicators. The first one was surface of soil with little vegetation. We had also the mean temperature uh, for the last 15 days, an index of vegetation in a buffer of 50 meters, an index of urbanization buffer in a, in, a, in a buffer of 200 meters, and cumulative rainfall during the last three days. So next step will uh, allow the extrapolation of entomological risk in the whole coastal area in French Guyana, and the correlation study with the presence of nine cases. Okay. So let's talk about the third approach that we are leading. It's about modeling spatiotemporal dynamics of nine fever outbreak to understand when an, uh, an outbreak appears, how it's, uh, it's uh, transmitted to other city from one city infected. So to do that, we, we had uh, 22 municipalities, areas, located in, in French Guiana in two main regions. The first one is the coastal area, uh, including 90% uh, of population with one national road, so that's not like we are. And uh, the inland uh, area is uh, including eight remote population centers, only accessible by river or air. 
And the question is, are the epidemiologic data sufficient, sufficiently well documented to allow dynamic transmission modeling? So we used uh, spatiotemporal epidemiologic data available only for the last four outbreaks. Uh, we have, as you can see, uh, biological confirmed cases and clinical cases during the different outbreak period. And we tried to formulate an inter-city transmission model uh, using the unit of city of study as a city or municipality. And for every city, we have the time of infection, population size, and every infected city is separated from susceptible city uh, by a distance or a duration journey. And we use the, an instantaneous uh, transmission risk uh, using different covariates. As you can see, you, we have a seasonal outbreak component. Uh, and that corresponding to a kind of um, infectivity weight for a, a, a city, uh, an outbreak, as, uh, sorry, uh, the population of infected area, the population of susceptible area, and the duration journey of the, of the distance, but we use the duration journey because it was better than the, the, the distance between the infected and the susceptible city. After that, we make a combination of different these different covariates, different parameters, and we analyze different infectiousness profile. Uh, that means we, we, we just uh, make different scenario in order to see if uh, the force of infection from one infected city to a, another city can be constant during all the outbreak or can be related to the epidemic curve uh, in, the, in the city. So we test different uh, model different profiles to see what uh, the best for modelize for model the dynamic transmission. So it was a Bayesian framework for statistical inference, and we explore the ability of the best model to predict the infected cities during the next week. So just one slide about the, the results that we have. Uh, we we test different combinations of the different covariates, and the best one was the gravity model, including. Uh, the different covariates, so that means uh, population size of infected area, population size of susceptible, as uh, over people in the, uh, and over modeling uh, approaches showed the constant uh, local infectivity was the, the best uh, model to predict uh, transmission in French Guyana. So in conclusion, uh, this these are preliminary results of a work in progress, and uh, it's a primary assessment of impact of climate and environment of dengue fever. Uh, I present you complementary approaches to combat different uh, time and spatial scale. And uh, we can say that results are compatible with the biology and ecology of the vector. But we have to improve a uh, little bit more the model of entomological risk. Now we are in a phase of back and forth process between the model and the data and we will try to analyze uh, the correlation with the presence of cases to validate our model. So we will try to add uh, over exploratory variables in the future such as human status and human movement and uh, we will uh, have a reflection with health authorities to see that, that the last slide uh, to integrate this result in the risk assessment and preparedness. So approach can be uh, also applied to assessment of chikungunya transmission because it is the same uh, also applied to assessment of chikungunya transmission because it is the same vector. So we can see that uh, we have some similarity even if uh, the epidemiology is not the same. And uh, it will be fine to uh, find some uh, possibility of collaboration to with Brazil because we are a neighbor country and it will be um, important to take the risk of introduction, for example, or the interconnectivity between uh, the different countries. So thank you for your attention.